this on here. See if you can work this out while I'm waiting for everybody to arrive. Okay, girls, so welcome to everybody. I think some of you, I'm not quite sure, sure what happened in our start, but I think we started a little bit early. So welcome to everybody. My name's, um, what is my name? My name is Gecko, and I'm from Albany with Tari Girl Guides. And we, I will let the other leader here introduce themselves. Hi everyone, my name's Tiger Lily, and I'm from Albany Girl Guides as well. Um, and it's all up to Gecko tonight, so I'm going to mute myself. Just as a reminder, though, you're on the state webinar if anyone's a little bit lost. Um, this is for 10 to 13 year olds. Um, tonight we're going to learn a bit about coding, um, but Gecko will tell you more about that. So I'm not going to tell you anything else about that. And um, please keep your chat um, to, well, I'll be watching your chat, but please be polite, remember your guide laws, and we will um, all have fun. All right, away you go, Gecko. And we also have lurking in the background. I'm not sure if you can see a little a beautiful threshold somewhere. We also have um, Sasha, our communications officer from Girl Guides WA. And without her, none of this would happen. So big, huge thank you to her. I don't know if she's going to pop up and appreciate it and, and accept that. But if she doesn't, thank you. So for those that haven't been on the webinars before, they're a little bit different than Zoom sessions that you might have with your units. Obviously, you can see us, but we can't see you. Um, there is a few things that you can do. There is the chat. So down the bottom of your computer somewhere, there's a chat option. Now you can use that to make sure, so you can chat to everybody here. Just make sure if you're chatting to everybody that you choose the option that says chat to attendees or chat to panelists, because otherwise you're just chatting to individual people. The other thing is we have a Q&A section. So if you've got a question that you want answered, if you type into that, then Tiger Lily is going to be keeping an eye on that. And if there's anything she can answer, she'll answer or she'll let us know and we'll answer them questions as we go along. And the other one is there's a hands up. So down the bottom, you can pop your hands up and we can unmute some of you to give you a chance to ask some questions or um, throughout the night. So the first thing I want to do is somebody to pop their hand up that knows what this code is. Is there anybody out there, Tiger Lily, that thinks they can tell us what this code is called? Not what the answer is, just the name of the coding. Uh, Bernadette, oh no, they're taking um, Jonathan, Jonathan Gauntlet. Uh, um, that was our dad's account that we're using. Okay, that's fine. Um, that's probably nice and safe. So what do you think it is? I think it's a rebus. Yeah, it is a rebus. Now, without telling us the answer, can you tell us how you work out a rebus? What do you do? Uh, it has some pictures as well as words. Mm -hmm. And what do you do with them pictures and words? You like put them together and to make a word. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. We're going to mute you and we're going to find somebody else to pop their hand up who know who has worked out this Rebus code and can tell us what the answer is.
Jasmine, you're the next one on my list. Jasmine K. Yeah, we will be with you soon. Well done. Excellent. Do you want to explain how you got the first line? Can you explain what you did? Well, W add egg cake GG equals we. Mm -hmm. um, it's a pill and then P equals L, so it's will. And the last one? Bell takes the double L is just B. Excellent. Well done. So I'm going to stop sharing now. So hopefully for those of you that were, you know, a little bit concerned at the beginning and didn't seem to understand it, does that make sense now? Hopefully it does. So in, in guiding, we do lots of coding and things like that. And it links back to our guiding history. So our guiding history, we all know, we all know who, who, who started, how, how Girl Guide started, hopefully. And if not, you're going to find out a little bit about that right now. So Girl Guides was, was started by some girls that went along to a Crystal Palace rally, which I'm going to read a story about. And I can't see you. This is really sad. But what I want you to do, I don't know if you've done participation stories before. So in this story, there's the words Crystal Palace. So because you're at home, you can be as goofy as you like because nobody's going to see you. So when I say the words Crystal Palace, I want you to stand up if you can, put your hands over your head and your fingertips touching the roof. And make it like, like this to make a roof. So that's Crystal Palace. Can you see that? Whoops. Yep. Okay. When we say Robert Baden Powell, you're going to stand up really straight and you're going to salute with your right hand to your forehead. So not our salute, but this salute, <laughs> like the army. Okay. And when we say boys, you can jump up and down and yell, hooray. And Tiger Lily's going to do all of these actions while I read the story. And girls, you're going to jump up and down and pump your arms and shout, girl power. So Tiger Lily, you need to unmute yourself. Well, see, I, <laughs> I was just miming that. I didn't actually shout it, if I'm honest. All right. All right. So are you ready? Tiger Lily's gonna do this with you. I'm reading the story. Tiger Lily's gonna help you with the action. Okay, so the title of the story is called The Crystal Palace Rally. So almost a hundred years ago, across the ocean in England, lived a man named Robert Baden Powell. He was very famous. He had been the leader of English soldiers in a war far away in Africa. During that war, he had discovered that boys could be very useful and do things that grown ups. Yeah. But when Robert Baden Powell returned to England, <laughs> He found lots of boys who got into trouble or were bored because they had nothing exciting to do. Do you know what Robert Baden Powell never even thought about? He never once thought about girls. What he did think Girl about, power! What he did think about was writing a book. He called his book Scouting for Boys. It was full of information about things he knew. Sorry? He was... Keep going. Sorry. It was full of things boys could do, especially outdoors, like cooking over an open fire, tracking animals, sleeping in tents, and even under the stars. Lots of boys read Robert Baden Powell's book, Scouting for Boys. They got together and did the things he suggested in the book. They called themselves Boy Scouts and often got a man to help them. One day in 1909, Robert Baden Powell invited all boys anywhere in England, Scotland and Wales, to oh, London, to the Crystal Palace for a rally. A rally is a big gathering, something like a parade and a party together. The Crystal Palace was an enormous building, all made of glass. That's why they called it the Crystal Palace. It was an exhibition building in a park. It was so big that trees grew inside. Robert Baden Powell wondered how many boys were calling themselves scouts. That's why he had the rally at Crystal Palace. 
He knew that he could be excited about going there. He was absolutely amazed that 11,000 boys turned up. They all prayed and saluted him and the other unfortunate people were, who were with him. He was very pleased to see all the boys. But then, right at the end of the parade, come an even bigger surprise. About 24 girls. Girl power! Robert Baden Powell had no idea the girls had Girl been power! Before, scouting for boys and trying out boys. the same exciting things as their brother. Some girls had even written him Girl letters. Power! They hadn't signed their letters, Jane or Sarah, on their, or their names. They just signed their initials, hoping Robert Baden Powell would think that boys had written the letters. That's exactly what he did think. Those girls were pretty smart. Girl Power! When the girls... Girl Power! Passed, Robert Baden Powell stopped them and said, Who are you? The girls answered, We're the Girl Scouts. Girl Power! Girl there Power! Girl any, power. He said. Oh, yes, there are the Girl Scouts. We're the Girl, girl power. Scouts. One girl said, please, sir, we're the wolf patrol of the Girl Scouts and we want girl to power. do something just like the boys. And that's how Girl Guys began. Girl Power! Robert Baden Powell asked his sister, Agnes, to set up their own organisation. He called them Girl Guides. Girl Power! And from that beginning, with those brave girls, has shown girl the wonderful world sisterhood of guiding that we all belong to today. Beautiful. I think I forgot some actually, Gecko, but I tried my best. That's all right, girls. How did you guys go at home? I'm sure you can chat through and let us know how you went. And hopefully you were able to catch up, uh, to keep up. So the next thing I want to do, so that sort of gives us an introduction of what girls is and, and, and how we came about and, and, and some information about BP. Now I've got some, a really small little um, YouTube video that I found that sort of sums up everything about BP really quickly. So I'm going to have a go at sharing that with you right now. Mm, not that one. Sorry, girls, I'm just trying to find it. doesn't want to open. Hang on. Here we go. It's not that one. Hang on. This one. All right. You did grow up to be five foot six inches tall. Five seven when wearing his hat. A stash of choice was the chevron. Maybe this is down to one of his encounters whilst working as a spy. And provided all the drawings. The most popular of these books was Scouting for Boys. Which would become one of the selling books of all time. Oh. You think that with all of his great fortune, he goes to his head. But he never took a penny from these sales. Instead, donating to the organisation. Sold when he created the Scouts. Which today has over 40 million members. It was during the successful defensive map for King in South Africa that impressed by how well the cadets responded to challenge. Young you people have skills for a So that video was obviously a um, a scout. So who can answer what we call Founders Day? Do we have someone that can answer that, Tiger Lee? Yes, yes. Uh, no, nobody's. Um, Isabel, Isabel, do you know what Founders Day is? What we call Founders Day? 
I think you can talk, Isabel. Isabel J. Oh, somebody's got it in chat. Oh, who's got it in chat? Oh, look at that. Yay. Yes, you've got it. The ones that have got it in chat. So thinking day. You're all very, very thinking right. Thinking day. Thinking day is what we call it. So hopefully you learned something. It was a pretty quick wrap up and you learned a little bit about BP. So moving on to BP, take an excerpt from um, something called The Two Lives of a Hero, which was a book that he actually didn't write. So those of you will know, and some won't, that during the war, BP disguised himself as a butterfly hunter. And he spied on forts and defences of the enemy. Um, and I'll show you a photo in a minute of what I'm talking about. But whenever he met an enemy soldier, so he'd have his book in his hand, and he, this is what he said. With my sketchbook in hand, I would ask innocently whether he had seen such and such a beautiful butterfly, sorry, in the neighbourhood as I was anxious to catch one. 99 out of 100 did not know one butterfly from another, any more than I did. So one was on fairly safe ground in that way, and they thoroughly sympathised with the mad Englishman who was hunting insects. What the officers did not know was that baden Powell's sketches of butterflies included maps of their forts and defences. So I'll try and show you what I'm talking about. Whoops. Hang on. Where are we? There we go. Let's see if this works. Oi. Ah. Oi. Okay, sorry girls, for some reason it's decided to go blank on my screen. But what Baden Powell had was he had a shape, an outline of a butterfly, and in that butterfly you all know that butterflies have markings and lines. He would put particular little dots and things in the markings that, that, um, that showed us where um, forts and things like that were. I'll have a look a little bit later and see if I can find that for you. But while I'm looking at this, so that brings us into the coding part of this webinar. Oops, Tiger Lily might, there, thank you, Tiger Lily. So this is what he did. You can see all the little, all the markings on the butterfly. Those markings were actually, he would use them to actually be, um, they might be forts, they might be trench lines. Here we go. And can you see how that correlates, how that, to the butterfly that's further up? So that's what he used to do. So that brings us, that's why a lot of our wide games and things like that in guides are based around spies and things and coding and things like that. So I thought it might be fun just to do a bit of coding here. So we started off with Rebus coding. Who, who can give me some names of some other coding, some that you enjoy doing? Have we got anybody who'd like to talk to us? Tiger Lily, if not, you can type into chat and Tiger Lily can let us know. Tiger Lily, you're muted. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, it's a bit noisy around here, so I thought I'd better mute myself. Um, Isabella R, I'm going to unmute you. Hey, Isabella, can you talk to us? Uh, yeah, I think. Yes, we can hear you. What other types of coding do you know? Um, the only one um, type of coding I know is Python. Python, okay. That's yes. All right, thank you. I'm going to mute you now. Probably have three, Tiger Lily, I think. What do you think? Yeah, okay, yeah. not a problem. Um, oh, who have I just unmuted? It's Bernie. Bernie, oh, great. Hey, Bernie, what type of coding do you know? C the Caesar Cipher. The Caesar Cipher, fabulous, fabulous. Um, Evie, Evie, you're unmuted. What type of coding do you know? I know some flag signals and yep. I also know some sign language if that's a code. It is, most definitely. And in fact, there's been some very 
um, famous instances of people using body language and sign language as codes to save their lives and all sorts of interesting things. So yes, definitely. Nairi, what type of coding do you know? Um, well, I personally like what is known as pig pen. Pig pen. Yes, I like pig pen too. That's one of my favourites. Are you happy with that, Gecko? Thank you, girl. So it looks like you all know quite a lot about coding. So I thought we could have a, a look at a couple. And then I've got one that we can, you actually need all the bits and pieces that you've got with you to do it together. Okay? So starting with, um, we had someone say pig pen. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to share my screen. Oops. And hopefully... This will come up this time of what pig pen is. Give me a moment. I've got to swap. There we go. All right. Can everybody, hopefully everybody can see that. This is pig pen. So you can see on the right hand side, just here, you've got a, you've got a, a decoding sheet. So usually we give this to our girls in two different sheets. We give them a We've code. got Rebus, Gecko. Oh, have I? Sorry? Yeah. Got... Oh, have I got... Sorry. Okay, I had it on my sheet screen. Sorry. I'll try that again. Thank you. No worries. No, you can't see it yet, everybody. She's Here just getting it Sorry. Up. Here we go. So hopefully now, girls, you can see that. There we go. All right. So this is Pigpen. On the right-hand side here, we've got a code where you can see all the letters and you can see the shapes around the letters. And on the left-hand side here, we have the code. I'm going to give you about three minutes to, so to solve that code and then we'll come back together and we'll have a chat about it. So we'll start about now. One minute remaining, girls. I'll give you a clue for those that are maybe finding it a little bit tricky. Let's do the first one together. Can you see the shape here? If you come over to the right-hand side and find the same shape on the key, so the first letter would be H. You've got about 40 seconds. Off you go.
All right. So how did you go, girls? I can see a few of you got it. A few of you found it tricky. Tiger Lily, can we unmute somebody that thinks they worked it out? Okay, um, those of you with your hands up, maybe put your hand down unless you know that you've got it worked out. I'll give you a second. Um, so I'm going to lower all hands, which I know is annoying. And then if you know it, put your hand back up, please. Okay, Penny, Penny H, I'm going to unmute you. Tell us, do you know what it says? It says, hi, the Girl Guides of WA. Is that what it says, Gecko? It I was busy is. connecting other things, so that's perfect. It is, so well done. How did you find that? Have you done, have you done this before? No. Well done, Penny. Very, very, very impressive. Awesome. Well done, girls. I'm going to stop sharing that. Okay. So that was, that was pig pen. So well done, girls, that got it. And those that found it a little bit tricky, hopefully next time you see that, you'll be able to, it, you'll be able to make sense. If there's anybody who didn't get that and didn't understand it, we'll, I'll try and put something together and we'll, we'll put it somewhere so that we can explain how it works. But hopefully you can all sort of understand that now. Um, so another one somebody mentioned was semaphore. Who here knows what semaphore is? Tiger Lily, can you find some people that can? Uh, nobody's got their hand up just yet. If you know what semaphore is, whack your hand up. Um, Molly, Molly T. Uh, Molly, where did you go? Molly, can you hear me? Sorry, everybody. I've got two meetings going on at the same time. No, we lost Molly. Um, Evie. Evie. You're unmuted. Okay, um, I know what semaphore is. Okay, it, great. It's like your own made up um, Morse code or code that you have made to communicate with people. Possibly, Molly, let's see what somebody else thinks. Tiger Lily, can we find someone else that thinks they know? Where are you, Stephanie King? Stephanie King, put your hand up. So I can, so you can tell us what you just said. I saw that on the chat. There you are. Okay, Stephanie, tell us. It flag signals. That's, That's exact, the one. Yeah. That's exactly right, girls. So, ooh, where did everybody go? So, semaphore is using flags, and it's what they use. They use in the navy. What they used to use in the navy, we just had a seaman tell us. So now they have radios and things like that. But they used to use yes. semaphore. It's it's flags that you use in a different way, a different movement for every letter of the alphabet. So I've got a photo here of a few girls in our unit. So we recently did semaphore is part of our ANZAC syllabus and I'm sure some of the other girls would have and they've allowed me to share their photos with you. So I'll show you what semaphore is. Okay. Okay. This, we actually have Nairi here. She's actually here tonight. So can you see that, Tiger Lily? Yep, so this is Nairi, and can you see the flag she has in her hands? And she's moving them in different ways, so they're different letters. This is another one, which I'm allowed to share as well, from one of our girls in our unit. And this sort of explains a little bit about what semaphore is. So it's a flag signaling, sorry, signaling system in an alphabet. So each of the letters, if you have a look, 
look something like this. So A, B, and all the way through. So that is what semaphore is. So those of you that weren't quite sure, that's what it is. So there's lots of other codes. There's Morse codes and cipher wheels and all sorts of really groovy stuff. You can tell I like coding. <laughs> um, so, but what I want to do now is move on with you girls and actually make a code. So you would have had, hopefully in your kit, you have a pen. Doesn't matter what size, shape it is. You just need a pen. You need your sheet of paper and from your sheet of paper, you need to use your scissors to cut a strip. Now that strip needs to be big enough to wrap around your pen like this. You see how I'm wrapping it around? So I'm going to give you a moment, cut your strip of paper and then we'll move on to the next step. I haven't even cut mine. Mine's torn, but it'll still work. Gecko, you need to unmute yourself. We can see what you're doing, but we can't hear you. Thank you. So wrapping the piece of paper around the pen, making sure there's no gaps. It doesn't matter how tight or how loose you do it. It's entirely up to you. It can cover the whole pen or it cannot. Mine doesn't. But sometimes what you can do if you want to cover the whole pen, you can cut a second piece and you can sticky tape it to the first piece and make it longer. This, um, this is a really good way to send a secret note. And I'm not, I'm not, yeah, okay, I really am telling you that if you want to pass a note, this is a really good way to do it. All right. So what you're going to do with your second pen, so you should have two pens, one with your piece of paper wrapped and the other pen that you're going to write on a message onto this piece of paper. Now it's going to be tricky for me to do it because I've sort of got to turn like this so you can see what I'm doing. So you're going to make sure when you write, you start on the left and go to the right and you're going to make sure, just make sure that any of your letters aren't on the joins of the piece of paper because it's really tricky to read later. And you can turn it around. You can see how I've started there and I'm turning around so that I can keep going with my message. Okay, so part of this, part of the um, important thing with this is that your friend needs to have a similar type of pen or pencil to be able to read it yeah. yes um you can write whatever you want to i've written happy birthday because i saw it was someone's birthday in the chat so happy yep. birthday so the next thing you're going to do is take the paper unwrap it from your pen hey tiger lily can you show me your message can you hold it up oops we can't see it 
can you see how? Yep, that's tiger lilies, and this is the one that I've got. I hold it. So you can see that you actually can't read that. It just looks like squiggles. But what you could do, like Tiger Lily suggested, if you've got a friend in your class, you can do this and then you can pass this piece of paper along to somebody else and they get the pen. Like Tiger Lily says, it needs to be the same pen, otherwise the same diameter, otherwise they won't be able to read it. You should now be able to put your paper back on, wrap it back up and read your message. Now this can be tricky because I've just put mine on backwards. <laughs> so what, what I usually do is I usually do a little dot where my starting point is. And then I know that's the end I start wrapping. That's a little trick that I've got. That's a good trick. So was everyone able to wrap their pen, to make their message and then rewrap it and be able to read it? How did you go? Yes. Yeah. Lots no. of yeses. Only a few no's. Excellent. But lots of yeses. So well you done. Can, you can do this, girls, as you can see, on anything. Anything that's round, this works on. So I actually use the glue stick here. So this is one. I made quite a big, long message. And this actually wraps around. Let's see if I can remember a way I wrapped it. Here we go. And let's see, I did this because I was hoping that you girls would be able to read this over the internet. So let's have a look. Oops, and I'm doing it the wrong way. That's not helpful. There we go. Yeah, your teacher definitely will be like, what? That's exactly right. No, your girls aren't going to be able to read that. Sorry. I did do a big one and I did test it, but it's not working. So hopefully girls, you, hopefully girls, you went and said, all you need is, yeah, anything, anything with a diameter that you can wrap around, paper, scissors. You don't even really use, need them now as Ty Lily showed you. You can just rip your pieces of paper and some pens. And if you want to make long messages, stick it and um, sticky tape. Sorry. Is there any other, is there any other coding that you girls can think about that we haven't covered tonight that you'd like to do maybe at another time? A lot of them are talking about um, actual computer okay. coding, which yep. is super right. interesting. And Morse code and Python. So Lots Morse of Morse code, code and Python. And Python. All right. So maybe that's something else we can look at later in the term. Um, the other thing I want... I wanted to get back to was our coding. So we've, we've looked at semaphore, we've, we've made our stick. I talked a little bit about cipher. I just want to show you what I mean when I say cipher. Let me just find it here. Okay. I really, where's my cipher? And, um, um, and another one is binary code, which we can definitely talk about because that is useful to know for so many reasons mm -hmm. um, and is something that you can use with pen and paper. And you can also do binary code with lines, which is kind of what barcodes are made of. Okay. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. So this is a cipher for those that don't, hasn't, haven't seen cipher before. So cipher can be shown like this, like a wheel, or it can be shown like this sometimes in a grid. So sometimes you can just have a, a square down the bottom. This one's really cool. This is actually an online one and you can actually, I've just, I've just screenshotted it, but you can actually make this one spin. And all you do is you give the code. So it might be A and it might equal E. So you spin this around so that A and E are together. And then when there's A, it actually reads as E. And then so B would be F and so on and so forth. And that's a really, that's another really cool one that you can share. What's the toilet roll for? Okay, the toilet roll was, so the toilet roll was just if you can do the same thing with a toilet roll. Okay, it was just so that you could 
some people have difficulty doing it on a pen because you have to write quite small. So if you found it difficult on a pen, you can actually, like I had, I didn't have a toilet roll, so I found a glue stick. And you can wrap it around and do it on the toilet roll. And it's really good one to start with because you can write bigger, as you can see. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to do was sort of to wrap up our history on Girl Guides. We've learned a little bit about how Girl Guides started, who Baden Powell is. We've learned a little bit about his involvement with coding and things like that. And we heard about, we heard about Agnes. So there isn't usually much information on Agnes, but I did manage to find some on a website. Now, is there anybody here that feels confident in reading from a web page that I'm about to share? Is there anyone with their hands up, Tiger Lily? Oh, I am. If you uh, are, pop your hands up and Tiger Lily will unmute you while I find this, while I find this um, screen to share and you can read to us. Okay, cool. Well, yes, there's a few that have got their... Um, you can maybe, they can do a paragraph each, maybe, Tag Lily. I'll let you be in control of that one. All right, no worries. Okay, Ava C, I'm going to put you, your unmuted Ava C. Ava? Hello. Hello. <gasps> oh, my gosh, it works. Awesome. Can you read what that is up there on the page? Is it up the top? Yeah, Agnes, it starts Agnes Smythe Baden Powell. Agnes Smythe Baden Powell was born on the 16th of December 1858. She was the ninth out, out of 14 children and was the younger sib sister of BP. She established the Girl Guide movement. Thank you so much. Um, who's next? Uh, Nairi. Nairi, um, do you want to start from apart? Yes, please. Thanks. Apart from her outdoor interests of cycling and swimming, she helped her brother Baden, Baden Powell make aeronautical balloons, hot air balloons. Whoa, um, Mathilde, hang on all. Tiger um, Lily, we're here. Oh, okay, how far? <laughs> okay, all right. No, Ree. Yes? <laughs> Can you read what Gecko has highlighted, please? Agnes is known for being an accomplished musician, playing the organ, violin, and piano. She had many interests, including natural history and astronomy. Astronomy. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Do you want to... Um, okay, thank you very much, Nairi. Um, Mathilde. Matilda. Mathilde? You're unmuted. Do you want to speak to us? Yeah. Okay. Um, Maddie, Maddie R. Maddie R. Yeah. Ah, uh, there you are. Do you want to read the next bit that Gecko has highlighted to us, please? Yep. Due to the pop popular options against mixed actors, boys and girls in Shrieking together. Steve P handed the leadership of the Girl Guide movement Ooh. to okay. Agnes for similar activities could be taught to guides, especially later in 1912. She became the president of the Girl Guide as a solution association. Good reading. Association. She she stated in her book published handbooks. For girl, for girls, girls must be partners and comrades, yes, yeah. rather than dolls. Despite her unorthodox ways, which 
lead people to believe that girls might become tomboys. She was con considered a kind lady and per perfect for her role. Thank you very much, gorgeous girl. You did very well. I had to attend a scout meeting for a minute there. I'm very sorry, everybody, for that. Um, do we need any more red, Gecko? You're still muted, Gecko. Yeah, sorry, we'll continue on. So did you know that Henrietta Smith, her mother, was Baden-Powell's third wife? And at the age of two, Baden-Powell passed away. So interesting facts about Agnes. She had six brothers. She completed a bicycle gym carners and bicycle polo. She spoke 11 languages, went in a hot air balloon, and once held the air high record, air high, sorry, air height record. She never went to school, was friends with Marconi, the inventor of wireless. She was known for her great organization and leadership skills. She went on to becoming the president of her province's Red Cross and also working for the League of Mercy and for Queen Mary's Needlework Guild. My goodness, what an accomplished woman. So we can see why we get so much out of Girl Guides if that's what we're aspiring to, inspiring to be. Now on this page, there is also a really cool little quiz which you can find out more information about Agnes. We're sort of running out of time today to be able to do that. I was hoping to do that with you, but we've sort of run out of time at the moment. So I'm going to unstop sharing. Okay, so hopefully today you've learned a little bit about our history. You've learned a little bit about coding and hopefully you can take them back to your units and share some of the information that you've learned. Um, but what I'm going to do is something I like to do with my girl guides is I set a challenge. So when we do stuff, and totally smiling. <laughs> so I usually set a challenge. It's up to you if you do that challenge. And it might be more challenging for some of you than it is others, but it's up to you if you take it on. So my challenge to you is, and you can share this information with your guide leaders and, and your peers in your unit, is to make a coded butterfly. Have a go. You draw a butterfly or download the outline of a butterfly off the internet and have a go. You can draw, you could code maybe your bedroom, maybe a park, maybe your classroom. Have a go. And that, that's a really unique way of coding. And I will see if I'm able to set up a mural where maybe you can share your pictures like Tiger Lee did a few weeks ago. I haven't got it organized yet, I'm sorry, but I'll see if I'm able to set up a code and a link and you can upload your pictures there. Or my other, or, or my other challenge is to research one of these or a different code and have a go at home. All right, so hopefully you've enjoyed tonight um, and hopefully we'll see you same place, same time next week. And we'll do some more girl guidey things. Um, and it was lovely to hear all your chatting and, and or see all your chatting, not hearing your chatting. And we will see you next week. Tiger Lily will finish off with um, taps. Sure. I just, and guys, it's lovely to see people from everywhere. All right, you ready? Taps. So, yeah, follow on with our jazz hands. Day's done, gone the sun, from the sea, from the hills, from the sky, all is well, safely rest, love is nigh. All right, something else I want to do we haven't done there is links. Oh, so if we're really careful, Tiger Lily, let's work this out. Are you to the left or the right of me? I don't know. Where Hang am on, I? Let's try this. Hang on. All right, we can't do this, but let's try. All right, so if we all put our hands up, we can try and link, okay. On um, the strength of each link in the cable depends. depends on the might of the chain. Who knows, Who knows when you'll be tested, <laughs> so the live that you bear the strain. So girls, yeah. dismissed. Dismissed. And we will see you same time next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.